Hello, you're watching Mel Made. My name's Mel and this is a podcast all about the things that I have made, which usually means things that I've knitted because I am a passionate garment knitter. So today I'm just going to be going through what I'm wearing, things that I've finished, finished objects, uh, works in progress and any other little um, mad little bits at the end. So let's get started. I should say just before we start because I always have to say something about the weather it's been foul <laughs> it's been horribly rainy in the UK but well, actually no we have had a few sort of sunny days with some showers but I've been at work when it's been sunny and so it's been pouring and pouring with rain and I managed to get in the garden just today and that's why my hair's gone mad because I got it caught in all of the roses when I was sort of hacking half of my garden down yeah so let's start with the knitting stuff uh, let's start with what I'm wearing. I don't know if you can see it, I'm trying a bit of a different setup today for reasons of light. I don't know if it's better or worse. Let me know if you've watched it before and you think it's better or worse here. Let me know, but I'm still sort of experimenting. But I think you can see it. Yeah, I am wearing my, hang on, I'll try and get it to focus there. I'm wearing my Elizabeth I. This is a pattern by Alice Starmore. And it is from her Tudor Roses book, which I absolutely love. I'll stand up. Hold on. I might. Oh, I might put the picture in as well so you can see it properly if you can't see it very well there. And um, this is knitted in virtual yarns two ply. And the colour, I think, oh, now you're asking what is the colour? I might have to put the colour down here, it's purple but I can't remember the exact name. It's um, Alistair Moore's yarn and it's a uh, it's a very woolly, it's, 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 it's a little bit rough but it's not scratchy if that makes sense. Um, it's really really gorgeous to knit with and all of the colours are named after sort of nature or, or things in nature uh, that could be found on the Shetland Islands so it's not Heather I will have to look up what it is and put the colour down there, but I absolutely love this colour. It's, I don't know if you can see, but there's like lots of, oh, bit of pill in there, tiny bit. It's worn really well. I've, I've had this fitted for like about three years now, I think. It's got loads of different colours in it, like little blues and pinks and things, and it makes for a really, really rich, gorgeous colour. And for this pattern, it's a... Uh, one of the simplest patterns, I think, in the Tudor Roses book, which is why I decided to knit it. I really liked it, but I was really nervous before I, I knitted something from there because those patterns, I don't know if you're familiar with the book, it, lots of people are, um, that the patterns are, they're quite complicated, they're quite involved, they're like little works of art, you, you know, you, it's not something that you do, you, you know, you, you take a while over them and just, ah, oh, they're beautiful. And they're all sort of inspired by different women within the Tudor so the Tudor regime, the Tudor reign, and this was the Elizabeth the first, and it, it was one of the simpler ones. They're, they're knitted uh, bottom up, most of them, I believe, seamed, and this one's got obviously, so you can see a lovely like lace cable panel here, and it's the same on the back, and the lovely, so lovely detailing here on the sleeves. Sort of I don't know if you can see it there, the sort of crisscrossing. It's all very, very pretty. And it was slightly out of my comfort zone, but I was really pleased with how it turned out. I did moderate a little bit. You don't need to do any mods to any of the patterns. They're so detailed and and lush. But I did I did miss out some of the decreases and then increases for the waist because I looked at the measurements and it looked like it was really going to do like a bodice thing like that. And I wasn't quite wanting that having said that the fit that I've got I could have I could have done that shaping and I think it would still have looked all right but uh yeah the only thing I would change about this is I didn't do the long sleeves they're supposed to be princess sleeves and they look beautiful but I thought I'm gonna get them in like in the washing up water and so I'm not I'm not princess I have to do things in the house so I I tried anyway to moderate the sleeves and make it like a little less a flare but less of a flare and in doing so I'm not very I wasn't very experienced at this stage anyway in knitting jumpers I managed to knit them too short I mean they're probably about bracelet 
length which would be all right for some people but for this I think they should have been longer so I did stretch them out a bit when blocking but with wool being woolly and having that bounce and that spring they've just sprung back into shape um but I still really really love this I, I, I wear it it's 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 warm it is warm but it's more probably for spring or autumn I think for up here in the, in the northeast of England it gets pretty pretty cold in the winter so I always have to lay it have this as a layering piece in the winter but it's it's a lovely a lovely one for like the spring and for the autumn so that's what I'm wearing. On two, I've got some notes here because otherwise I go off topic. <gasps> yes, on to finished objects. It's the moment that you've been waiting for for so long. <laughs> I, I'm not wearing it because this would be a little bit too warm. I have finished my Elsk dress. Hang on, get the right side. Ta-da! <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? I am going to put a photograph of me wearing it in wherever it goes because I don't think I could have the space where I'm filming now to, to pr prance about in it and I don't think you can see it properly but I am so so happy with this it's really soft and squidgy and I like the drape of it it's knitted in toft uh, the website I think is www.toft.co.uk and it's uh, from a farm in England and it's called Toft Fine in Chestnut that I've used and, and it's just 100% wool but it, I don't know I say but I don't know what sheep it's from it's so soft and it, it blooms beautifully as you work with it and the Fair Isle work on the sleeves and on the hem here you go I'll show you that there they this is uh, ducky darlings yarn most of it there's a little bit of socks yeah is the blue with some leftover sort of scraps i had from some socks i made my friend and also this this little wild card color that i discuss in detail in another episode um oh what is this one life in the long grass oh it's a sort of merino silk yarn from life in the long grass and it they're so stunning anyway that's um i've forgotten the name of that as well but there was this, that was scraps from what i used for my so faded jumper so yeah it's knitted bottom up in the round uh you knit it's a clever way of doing the hem it's really really addictive i mean there's a slight pause i suppose as i did this bit because this is a lot of knitting and it's interesting because um, this is a pattern, by the way, I should have said first by Gudrun Johnston in her from her Shetland Trader 3 book. And her patterns are based on the, the garments that her mother designed and, and sold in her shop in the 70s in Shetland. And I think it was Shetland, it was in the Highlands anyway. And I think this would have been possibly full length or a lot longer in the original version. But her mother would get uh, knit the plain sections in with machine because that's a lot of knitting and can you imagine if it was twice the length even more knitting by hand so I think um Gudrun Johnston sort of updated them and, and made them work for sort of today's hobby knitter or you know hand knitter anyway and I'm really really happy with the result this is the first time I've knitted a dress I wanted one for ages I'm entering it into the dream knit cal that's being hosted by knitting traditions um because it is one of my dream knits and I never thought I'd be able to do it and I have done it and I'm proud of how patient I was with this middle section although it wasn't as tiresome as I thought it would be I thought it would take a lot longer but uh, I think you're, you're waiting every 10 rounds or I can't remember how many rounds you're doing decreases for the a-line shape that you've got and I think that sort of keeps you going like oh in two rounds I get to decrease exciting and yeah it went a lot quicker than I thought it would so that is my Elsk dress. I'm very, very proud of that, as I think you can probably tell. So that's not my only finished object, though. I'm doing very well at the moment. I have knitted a hat. I'd needed a hat for ages. The last hat I knitted was an absolute disaster. It was just after I got COVID and I was still sort of convalescing. I got hit really badly by COVID in 2020. Well, I mean, I thought I was worse than anyone else thought I was. You know, I even went to hospital and they were just like, you 
go home <laughs> if you just feel rubbish but you can breathe you're fine um but it took me did i was about off work for something like three weeks which is unheard of for me anyway i tried to knit a hat i tried to learn brioche and knit a hat at the same time and <laughs> oh, i might put a picture in here it was so fun but it was with trees and then because I didn't do the increases and the decreases properly because who starts learning brioche and then does the increases and decreases it was just silly and the trees all sort of do this like they're blowing in the wind and so I do wear it because I still like it it's quirky I thought I do need a hat that doesn't look like some crazy person's knitted it and thought that was good so I have knitted the hold on this is the Graham hat so I don't know if it's supposed to be for a man or if it's just it's probably unisex this is a design by Jennifer Adams. It was really quick. It was really easy. Hang on, I'll show you by wearing it. It's a slouchy one. I love slouchy hats. I've got quite a large head and I've got a lot of hair. So my problem with hats is always I'm yanking them down. I'm quite pleased with it. Hold on, you can do it with a brim, but I don't know if I'll wear it just like that. Oh gosh, answers on a postcard. Quite like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm really pleased with it. I used Signature Sparkle 4-ply from West Yorkshire Spinners. Can you see the sparkles? Yes. I saw this. I went on one of my knitting groups that I've, I've joined a, a knitting afternoon, like once a, once a month on a Sunday. I meet with some ladies and it's really lovely, actually, because I don't really have any real life knitting friends. So I just come there. I've just joined. I don't think they know, really know what to make of me. I'm like... <laughs> and... Um, it's run by a wool shop and sometimes it, the, the lady that owns it brings things to sell and she showed me this and yeah, I'm a sucker for sparkle. So I've bought some of this and I thought hat, but then I thought I've been dying to strand some mohair with something else to make hat because it's just so warm. And uh, I love the fibre space cumulus, which isn't a mohair, it's like a mohair equivalent, it's a baby alpaca and silk yarn. So I thought I'll strand this together this together with my fiber space cumulus and color storm cloud which is one of my favorite colors it's just a warm purpley lavendery gray it's gorgeous i knitted my ranunculus in it and the the result is this beautiful sort of heathered mottled mild that's the word i'm looking for a mild fabric with little sparkles in it so and i've got a gray coat and i haven't checked the gray but it'll probably go for the winter and I didn't even follow the pattern properly. I mean, I did cast on what I was told to. I did do everything I was told. I did the large one because I said I've got a big head. And then it's supposed to be a broken rib, but instead of doing a broken rib, I did sort of uh, moss stitch, which I think in America is, is seed stitch. The only problem with that being, this is smarty pants thinking she could alter the pattern. I couldn't actually because of all the, you have to knit two together at certain points to get the decreases. And that really messes up a moss stitch because you're doing knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and then you knit two together and oh, it's all ruined. So, but I mean, I knew it wouldn't really matter because it's the fuzzy with the baby alpaca and silk, there's sparkles, it's quite a dark colour. There's lots of knits and purls everywhere and I thought that no one's going to notice. Um, but if I had used, you know, more of a, a rounded, um, like worsted sort of yarn it would be really really obvious so don't do it I did follow the pattern the pattern's lovely there's nothing wrong with the pattern I just fancied a bit of moss stitch just thought I'd be clever and uh yeah so a hat hurrah <laughs> a lot quicker than I thought as well a successful hat that doesn't like look <laughs> insane <laughs> oh what a time to be alive so I'm getting winter ready there's a little nip in the air up here I mean, summer's just given up. What's the point? It's going to be cold soon. I can't wait to wear all my jumpers. Yes, I'm that obsessed with knitting. I want it to be cold so I can wear my jumpers. So now I have a hat to go with them. So that's that. The Graham hat. That's all my finished objects. Quite a lot for me. I'm going to move on now to my whips. My work's in progress. Now, while we're on the, the subject of the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature Sparkle 4 ply. I thought, well, that's great. I've got a hat. Now I need something to go with the hat. I need a scarf to go with the hat. And I've been talking and thinking about knitting a shawl for ages and never really got round to it. And 
I watch, I'm a big fan of the Knitting Traditions podcast and Inga always knits the half and half triangle wrap. I mean, she's got like, I don't know, she must have two or three different versions at minimum. And I thought, I really fancy that because I am I love garter stitch. I haven't knitted anything in garter stitch for ages. And I want something really big because whenever I knit a scarf, it's always too small because I get too impatient and finish it too early. Uh, just And I need something that's going to make me knit it massive and stick at it and really go for it. And I also wanted something to knit that was really plain and really easy. And so I have cast on my own half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern that you can get online. And this is how far I have got. You can really see those sparkles. So the idea is I'm going to do one triangle in the black sparkly one and I'm going to do the other triangle in the cumulus. Do I have the cumulus here? Yes, a little bit of it. So that'll be that. And I think that they will actually go quite nicely with the hat. You see, can you see what I'm thinking? And it's really clever and it blew my mind at first because I couldn't get my head around how this is constructed because I saw two triangles and thought, well, some, at some point they must be casting off. And I thought you would knit it like that. And then somehow cleverly join it and go with the other colour. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's made some weird noises and waved my hands around. But that's what I thought. And then, but it's not. It's the triangles made by doing short rows. So you do one row and then you go back and then you you know, you, you wrap and turn and then you wrap and turn, wrap and turn, wrap and turn until you've done this triangle. And it takes a long time because there's nearly 300 stitches in the big one I'm doing, making myself do a big one. So, yeah, it takes a long time. But I think for ages I was like, I don't, I can't, I don't understand. How, how is this going to work? How? And it wasn't until I realised oh, I'm wrapping and turning. So, the, so see, I've got here, I've wrapped and turned all of these. And so these are staying live stitches on the needle. And then I'm just going to carry on until I've wrapped and turned all of these. I don't even know if I'm explaining it properly, but there you see the beginning of a triangle there. And then when I've knitted all of them, I will just you know, get this colour, add this to that and start knitting in that. And I'll do all of the stitches in that and then I'll start wrapping and turning again. So this is like a meditative knit. It's good for me for my knitting not discipline, it's a hobby, it's a really fun pastime, but something calming I can do on car journeys without thinking about it. I think it'd be a good thing to have at work if there's any meetings or any pauses or my lunch break. That is what I'm working on and I'm not in a hurry to get it done, which is nice for me because I, I am a project knitter, not a process knitter, so I always get far too excited to finish all my projects far too quickly and forget to enjoy the process. So I thought that would be very, very good for me. So I'm pleased with how that's going. Ah, I should say, I'll talk about this later. I climbed a mountain and it's not good. It sounds like really impressive. It's not that impressive, but I'll, tell, I'll talk about that at the end. And I did extreme knitting with this at the top of the mountain because with this being, I think it's like a sock yarn, it's a bit hardy, it's a bit tough. I actually managed to stuff all of this in the pocket of my, <laughs> my raincoat and take it up a mountain and it did get wet with all of the mist. But I did some extreme knitting at the highest point in England so that's pretty nice but I'll, I'll I'll go on about that at the end towards the end so where are we next whip I've done quite a lot on this one I'm quite pleased it suddenly took off this is my oh let me do it the right way around my Rowena jumper by Fable Knitwear oh, so I've got wool sticking to it there there we go if you can see that properly it's going pretty well this is a pattern that I've wanted to knit for a long time by a designer that I've wanted to try one of her patterns for a long time I absolutely love Fable Knitwear's designs I had only got about this far last episode and that had been and before that I'd got about the same sort of distance up the body but I'd had to rip out and start again because I am using, I think it's four millimetre needles, yeah, which is what you're supposed to use. And I'm using, this is a three ply, it's Badma Yarns Mongolian Cashmere. I wax lyrical about this in another episode. It's soft, it gets even softer, it's very, very exciting. I've never tried cashmere before. And 
it's lovely to try. It's quite fine, but it needs room to bloom. And I struggled to get gauge. Then I got gauge. Then I knitted the size medium. I'm normally sort of a medium in most patterns. And it was looking really small, even for the body's all ribbing and you start bottom up. And it was just, I know it should look small, you know, because it's ribbing, ribbing pulls in and then there's a lovely stretch. But it was looking ridiculously small. I didn't, in the end, I didn't even try it on. I just pulled it out and I thought, because I'm struggling to get gauge, but I do need to use the four millimetre needles. And because that's giving this yarn more than enough room to bloom, I'm just going to go up a size because on Ravelry as well, a lot of people that have knitted this have said could go up a size. You know, this pattern's very fitted. It's very snug. So that's what I did. I went up a size and the ribbing for me was a pain in the backside because it just felt like it was so slow I went round and round and round and round for ages then you do some increases I've modified this I've knitted it at least 10 maybe 15 centimeters longer than I'm supposed to because I'm long bodied and it was a crop jumper anyway and I think that the lady that designs these she looks very petite and slim and I'm uh, not tall but I'm, I'm definitely long bodied long waisted so I and I know loads of things are always too short on me. I whinge about it all the time and don't often mod enough to get round it like I should. So I increased a lot, quite a lot, knitted up to the underarm. Then it's it's really clever. I've never done a construction like this, but I don't know if it's just me or whether it's unusual. Then I knitted the sleeves separately. I did mine flat and not in the round because I just like knitting in the flat. And I was, after all that ribbing, I was dying for a bit of just stocking stitch and going backwards and forwards and yeah that's so much easier for me than magic looping it and, and I don't like the little round needles that you do that with so I knitted the sleeves flat and they're to a certain point and then you join the sleeves onto the body and start going round and round again and you start doing a raglan there's going to be raglan shaping it's quite high necked there's going to be little puff sleeves and there's a lovely little keyhole detail at the back which I'm looking forward to doing. So I'm at the point now where I'm, I don't know, about a third of the way up the raglan. I'm just increasing for the little puff shoulders. You can see all my little stitch markers everywhere. And it's nice to have the combination now, knitting on, knitting and, per no, not purling, because I'm going in the round. Just plain stocking stitch on the sleeves. And then I've still got that rib to contend with on the body, but it doesn't feel as bad because I'm breaking it up. I don't know what it is about me and rib. It just, it might be the way I knit. It just seems to take for ages because you're always moving your yarn backwards and forwards. And but yeah, I got a lot of this done on the train to um, see my parents uh, last weekend. It's always good on a train journey. I Sometimes I drive and sometimes I'm like, no, if I get the train, I could just knit. And uh, yeah, that really helped me just get the ribbing done and get to the point where I'm getting excited that I'm nearly done. So I'm solely focusing on this now. Um, I'm really excited to wear this, especially with the weather starting to, it's not, it's not cold at all, but there's that little nip in the air in the morning and in the evening, I think won't be long before I can wear something like this. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think I like the way the pattern's written. It's written in a way that sort of, you, it's almost intuitive and they sort of sum stuff up. So it's not totally spelled out for you, but it it is clear and it works. And I, I yeah, I'm pleased, I'm impressed so far. So really enjoying this one. Now, last time I was going on about, did I have time to knit another summer top? because I did have some lovely linen, well, I've still got some lovely linen yarn, I haven't used it yet. And uh, I asked uh, what you thought, and a lot of you said, yes, you've got time to get another summer top started. It was only <laughs> July at that stage. And I was like, yes, never let it be said that I don't listen to good advice. I have started another summer top, <laughs> but it's taken quite a long time. So this is my sea glass tea i've got it on thread at the moment because i was trying it on and then i wanted to show you so i didn't put it back on the needles yet but i will do soon do soon i'm really 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 having fun with this it's uh so it's like that when i'm knitting it but it's, it's knitted in the round top down when i started i mean i used this color for the ribbing at the top for the neckline 
and then you can use just it says either you can do you do short row shaping at the back and either you can be changing colors all the time or you can just use the same color that you use for this and I thought oh that'll look silly no 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 I, I'll just alternate I'll just do loads of rows with two colors <laughs> and as you can see that looks silly but what I'm gonna do I think it looks less and less ridiculous the longer it, this gets so what I'm going to do is just stitch over a few of them, I think, and just do a little bit of Swiss darning or something at the end. That'll be fun. Just at the back, I've got long hair. It'll be, it'll be, I'm not undoing it. It'll be fine. And yeah, I'm use it doing this. There's another cowl, um, the Scrappy Stashy Cowl by Big Little Knits. I'm going to enter it in that, I think. And I've got so many bits and pieces and sock yarn and ends and I thought this will be great I'm doing it with a sort of a blue theme there's loads of different advice on the pattern oh I should say who the pattern's by I jump about a lot don't I sorry wool and pine so um the idea is is that every row it's one by one color work and you can do anything you like just just you could basically anything goes They've got lots of different suggestions. You could do warm and cool, or you could just do all cool, or you could just do one background colour and just have, you know, other colours dotted around. Um, I My theme is blue, <laughs> but then with brights, with contrast being the main thing. So, um, yeah, so as you can see, there's also some sparkle yarn in. I'm going for the sparkles at the moment. I've got this silky, sparkly silk that I got from nature's luxury lux from nature's luxury to knit my friend a beautiful um lace what's the word it's not a scarf or maybe it is well it's a triangle scarf I was thinking there must be another word for it but I've um I've knit knitted her that and had loads of that left over and I thought oh just having that twinkling in between the stitches would be really nice so to me, sea glass tea should be that everything, there's like little twinkles and little diamonds and, and beautiful little colours. So I've just tried to work in my bright brights alongside some of the more muted blues that I've got from in my stash. And there's some of that lovely yellow that I love that um, from Countess of Blaze. I've got a mad yellow top knitted in that, but I thought just weaving that through now and again just gives that pop and sets it all off. And yeah because I've got a lot of brights as as we've already talked about in other episodes I've got lots of bright things so I think that's working really well I'm not doing the the join you can see it's a little bit messy at the back I do think I can tidy it up a little bit I'm weaving in the ends as I go it would be better probably if I had this at the side I mean the start of round has now moved to the side now I'm down to underneath the armholes but that is a little bit messy at the back messier than I thought it was actually but I think I can tidy it up a bit and there is another method they suggest but it involves putting a little bit of like little stuff like um, a substance on to stop them from fraying uh, and, and how to do a magic knot and I haven't learned to do a magic knot and I didn't want to learn for this project partly because I'm stubborn and impatient but also because a lot of the yarns I'm using are silk and they're quite slippery and I didn't want to get substance and I don't know if it's a glue or something. I didn't want to get that. And I thought I don't want to start learning something on something that might not work that well. I'd rather learn magic knot on a wool that I know is going to stick, for instance. So I've done my little weaving in at the back. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm so far, I'm really pleased. It just does take a long time. I don't know why. I think it's just one by one colour work. I normally colour works quite fast for me, but... The nice thing about it is you go around as you go around and get towards, you know, the end of round, you start to plot and you can be like, what colours am I going to use next? And it's, you know, and I think that's a nice thing. This is like quite an active sort of uh, thing to work on. You're always thinking about colour. You end up, well, I end up with a huge bag full of little bits of balls and wool goes everywhere. No one else can sit on the sofa. Um, I'll show you my bag, actually. This is my, my grandma passed away recently, which is really sad but my lovely auntie sent me her knitting things and I've got a lovely, it's my grandma's knitting bag and it's being used for all of the colours, all of the wool I've got in there and it's really nice to just have that next to me. 
next well next to the sofa um i will get this finished i have a i don't know i'm a bit worried i'll finish it and then it'll be too cold to wear it but i think i still want to finish it it won't actually take that long i've broken the back of it really i've just got to knit the body and then it's a short sleeve tee and well even if you know if it suddenly gets really cold and i really really don't have the sort of you know the wanting to make it, it it will be something i can keep working on again in the spring and have for next summer anyway so that is that very pleased with that my last whip as ever is my dad's sock i've done one sock this is how far i've got with the second sock i'm doing all right it's not finished i think i said last time i'd have it finished i'm supposed to be knitting half an hour on this a day it sort of happens most of the time I probably do about 10 rounds a day. It is easy now, I turn the heel, back is just stocking stitch, just doing the pattern on the front. The patterns, I'd say I stretch it out. I've mean, I looked at this last episode, I don't want to bore you with it if you've already remember last episode, but you can see that's, it's a lovely pattern, it stretches. I just can't wait to finish it and he's got big feet. Actually, they're not that big, but they're big for, bigger than mine. And uh, I'm just like, come on, dad, how long do your feet have to be? <laughs> Not long enough yet, but at least I'm making progress with it and it will be done by Christmas. That is my definite deadline and I'll send them to him and he'll have them and I'll be just like, yes, this has been about two year drama in the making, socks in the making. That was my last whip. I normally do a swip section where I wrap it on about all the patterns that I want to knit and I'm thinking of knitting. And it's funny, I was thinking about this because I know a lot of podcasters do an acquisition section. I, that doesn't. Um, float my boat at all and I think the reason is is that because I'm a project knitter I'm more excited about the pattern seeing the pattern then I'll find the wool or the yarn for that pattern whereas I think people that may be more process uh, driven would be more like oh here's the, here's the yarn what am I going to do with it so I, I think that's that's why I'm not really into doing that um, if I've bought something really exciting I'll, I'll show you but um for my swip section though, I'm just going to repeat what I said last time. I'm still really, really thinking I want to knit the, the dress I mentioned last time. What was the name of the dress? That's still in my head, the Ada dress by Shirley Payden. And just looking at my cheat sheet here. And also the Nightingale by Nora, Nora, Nora Gon. That is what will be cast on. But I really have more whips probably on at the moment that I'm comfortable with. Four is my absolute limit. So I will finish my Rowena jumper and then I've got no excuse really. I probably should finish my sea glass tee before I then cast on the um, the nightingale jumper because I like to have a complicated one, an easy one that I can knit where I'm feeling really sleepy and can't want to concentrate and like a sock. <laughs> I'm like, oh, a sock. And I've, st I've got my half and half wrap which is my easy one. This was the easy one that I was only doing at work, but it's a bit more, con I'm concentrating now because I'm doing things, you know, with, with the fit in here. So this is sort of what I'm working on when I'm awake and conscious. Sea glass tea is just on the back burner while I finish that. So I don't have capacity in my tiny brain for another whip. So I need to wait, but we'll see. We'll see if I can finish my sea glass tea, see if I'm disciplined enough. I don't know. I can't promise anything. We'll see, but that's my swip section. Just a rambled rehash of last time. <laughs> And yeah, I have been up a mountain, right? Because there's a, I live in England and in, which is part of the UK. And in the UK, we have Ben Nevis in Scotland is the, the tallest mountain, the highest mountain. And, uh, you know, it's really challenging to climb. Uh, my partner's done it. He's uh, really, really fit. And then there's Mount Snowdon in Wales. And that's the next highest. And then there is a mountain called Scuffle Pike in England. And that's the highest peak in England. And because I've got loads of really fit friends <laughs> and we're all talking about mountains and really impressed that James has climbed Ben Nevis and, and Snowdon and Scuffle Pike. And we we're talking about it. And, and the impression I was given was like, oh, yeah, Mel, you can do Scuffle Pike, you know, oh, totally, totally doable. And so in my head, that just became like easy it'll be like walking along a hill. And <laughs> I said to James, I want to climb scaffold pipe with you. And he's been nagging me to climb more mountains and do stuff with him anyway. And he was like, oh, amazing. And he like booked a night in a hotel and like, oh, Mel, we're going to go and climb this mountain. And I was like, oh yeah. 
did <laughs> now I go to the gym I go on the cross trainer I mean but you know it's not not for hours just sort of 15 20 minutes it's really nothing to write home about but I'm not I'm not in inactive I'm not unfit I do yoga and what have you I lift very small weights so that I can keep knitting but, <laughs> but in my head I was like totally got this this is going to be like a walk and I can walk quite far fine <laughs> so we got there and I couldn't see the top of the thing because of the clouds and I was like hmm quite high there'll be an easy path we'll go round and round it'll be easy it'll be definitely be easy <laughs> and then I didn't even pack a rucksack I think James is insane and he just like wore, wore jeans and gambled about and jumps around and I think I had a bottle of water about this big in my pocket of my raincoat. Thank God I brought my raincoat because it was ridiculously, it poured with rain and it was horrendous weather. And I didn't really take anything with me. I put my knitting in one pocket, a bottle of water in another pocket and um, jobs are good. And I just had a really good big sandwich and I was like, let's go. It'll only be a couple of hours. Oh, it took, oh, it took so long. I don't even know where to start. We... It was nice for the first sort of, um, I don't know, kilometre. I think it's about 5k up, but not directly up, but by the time you've done the walk. And I kept saying, James, are we on the right path? Because this is very steep. And he was like, it's a mountain. We're on the right path. And I'd be like, there's an easy path though. And he was like, this is the easy path. And I wasn't. <laughs> anyway, I ran out of breath to actually argue with him. And he he's really fit. So he was, he was running up and then waiting and jumping going come on Mel come on Mel there's old ladies going past you come on and I was like like a red face like puffing away like a steam train just trying <laughs> and people were coming past me coming down going are you okay and and I was going no no I'm not I'm not very fit and this is very high and they were like mm. <laughs> a little bit concerned and I kept going and then we got into the part where it's just mist and you can't see anything anymore and the rain's coming down and everything was wet and I'm really pleased I wore a woolen jumper, I wore my daffodil and um, thank God I did, wool's great, it was really repelling the moisture and stuff and doing a lot to wick away the sweat and things and I kept saying I've got to stop so I kept having little rests but then James was getting impatient so I was overheating and I kept saying James I think I'm, I think I'm having a stroke, he's like you're not having a stroke, I think I might be having a heart attack, I'm not fit enough for this, he's like come on you've got it but every time I looked up it was just more mountain. It just never seemed to end. But then there was mist and I was like, well, it must be near. I, I kept thinking around this corner. That's got it. It's never, it was never, it was never it. And I was like, this mountain goes on for eternity. And I honestly, I nearly turned back. But I was just like, I can't get halfway from mountain and come down again. That's so lame. So I kept going, but my legs were shaking. <laughs> and actually, I can see how people die. And I know I sound very dramatic and I am being dramatic, but I was just like, this is not going to die. I don't know how I could do this. And I have so much respect for all the people that were just, a lot of them, a lot older than me, chugging along with their little sticks and just just doing it. And I'm like, wow, how much stamina someone has to do that. Um, we eventually got to the top. I'm not making a big meal out of this, but I'm just trying to say, like, I'm not one of these people going, I climbed a mountain. Everybody do it. It'll be great. Won't be great. Take a helicopter to the top, smile at the view and come back down and do it on a clear day not on a misty day because I got to the top, couldn't see a view, just missed. <laughs> but I did some knitting at the top. So I can say that I was the highest standing person in England at one point and I was knitting, extreme knitting. So um, I might put a little video in actually of me doing that. <laughs> Yay! That was my reward, <laughs> no view, no nothing. And then I was like, I've got to get down. I don't know how I can get because it's really steep. And um, when I'm in my 20s, I probably would have just frolicked down. It would have been fine because you just bounce when you're 20. Don't you? But like, I'm in my 40s now and I was just like, I'm, I'm going to break something. I'm going to like, I'm going to have a fall. <laughs> so it took ages to get down. And obviously my legs were wobbly and I'd like, everything was in agony. Like every step was agony. And I was just like, it was raining. I don't, I don't know how we got to the bottom. Um, and poor James, because he actually got too cold because he, he could have, gone up and got back again within I don't know about half the time um and he was sort of trying to like cheerlead me on <laughs> and I was not impressed with him I was like <laughs> I thought you said this was easy but to him it is easy not to me um but yeah I was very proud that I did it and I was very pleased to get back to not dry land but you know the level ground and then I made him go and get the car and come to the, the nearest style so I could just fall in the car and be driven two minutes to the the guest house where we were staying and um, 
I, was, I can be a bit of a drama queen, but I did it, knitted on a mountain. So that is my news. <laughs> that was a really long segment, sorry. Yeah, there's, there's three other things that I wanted to ask you about or update you with. I'll do the boring housekeeping one first. People who have knitted linen, lovely, clever people on YouTube. I knitted this, I don't know if you remember, it is my Moonset Tea. I go on about it in another episode. I'm not good enough with numbers to remember my episodes. And as you can see, it's knitted in 100% linen, white linen. It's Lena, I think. I'll talk about it in another episode. And as you can see, the linen has softened because I've watched it 11,000 times because I've got a stain on it. Hang on, let me show you the stain. Can you see? I'm so upset, I think. Do you know what I did? I, and it, learn from my mistakes, people. I put it in the machine without a special bag. I've got special bags, I just totally forgot because linen, I'm being a bit casual with linen because it's quite hardy, it's quite sturdy. Put it in the machine and I think there, there is a little bit of mould that started to grow in the middle and the rubber bit of my machine. It's trying, it's impossible to get off. And I think it must be from that because it definitely didn't look like this when it went in. Anyway, I've tried soaking it in vinegar. I've tried and then I've washed it and it's still there. I've tried soaking it in vanish. I've tried, um, actually they're the two things I've tried. I've tried a normal wash. And the last thing I tried was um, I soaked it in quite a diluted chlorine bleach. But I know I looked it up and that's supposed to weaken the fibres. Not supposed to do that. I only soaked it for about 10 minutes. And it's not got it off, so I'm absolutely devastated. I can't, if anyone has any tips or tricks as how to get stains out of white linen, please, please let me know. Because as you can imagine, I spent so much time knitting this. And I mean, I know I do drop stuff, I am mucky, but I mean, even for me, that's a record. Within less than a year, I've got something black on it that I can't move. Um, I don't think it'll stop me wearing it, but it makes me feel sad when I see it. So if anyone has got any advice, I am, please, please do let me know. Because So that's one thing I wanted to ask you about. The other thing I wanted to tell you is I have, with my grandma passing away, my auntie sent me some of her knitting items, but she also sent me a lot of her old knitting patterns. And it's been so wonderful to look through all these vintage knitting patterns that cost, I mean, I've got one here, 6D, which is six shillings, I think, in old, old currency. And I think some of them must be from the 40s and the 50s. And I just wanted to show you one that I found because I think I'm going to knit this one. It's uh, it's called In the Dolman Style. It's an old Peyton's pattern. Look at that. And I love her face on there. Look at her cheeky smile. But this is knitted sideways and there across. And I just think that is such a lovely silhouette. And, it, you know, it's proper. It does look, it must be 50s. I don't think it could be 40s. Um, I don't think it says. Does it say? Oh. But I'm not sure if your grandma was here. She might tell me. But yeah, I think I'm going to knit that one. So I'm going to go to Yarndale at the end of the month. And so I think one of my missions will be to find some three ply yarn for something like that. I'm thinking maybe a dark mossy green would be lovely. Forest green, I mean. I'll have a look for that. And the last thing I just wanted to show you is I, in work, I've got a new job in the same organisation, but in a different team. And so I'm leaving my current team. My dog's just clearing his throat. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you, Charlie. I've so I've moved teams and my, my lovely team got together and got me presents. And they got me this. <laughs> Mel's knitting bag. How great is that? So it's not really oh it's got my sunglasses and I've lost them. But yeah, I'm using that on a normally to house my half and half wrapping. So I'm, I think I'm going to end up using it as a handbag, just the one that has my knitting in it, because it's just so big. Um, but isn't that, what a beautiful present. I thought I've got to show that because if anyone's, you know, tell your, your significant others, and I don't know where they got this from, but I think they must have just gone to a, a bag place and then gone things personalised. Um, where's it from? Westford Mill. Is there any other labels on it? No, try Westford Mill or Google personalised bags, but oh, how's 
sweet is that? So I'm over the moon with that. So thank you to Laura that I know organised that. Yeah, so I think that was everything I wanted to share. Um, I feel like I've rambled a lot, but I suppose that's what this is, an essential, a knitting ramble. I can't remember if I've covered everything I want to cover, but my notes say I have finished. <laughs> Um, thank you ever so much for watching and please do let me know what you're working on and if you've got any advice about anything I'm working on. Um, part of the reason I do this is because I don't have any a lot of real life knitting friends and it's so nice to sort of join the conversation online and, and get people's views and advice so if anyone's got any thoughts do let me know and thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!